Hi, I'm Melissa Roddy. I'm currently making a documentary about the history of Afghanistan and recently learned that the movie, Charlie Wilson's War, makes the claim that during the 1980s, the United States support to the Afghan rebels in their fight to defeat the Soviet Union went to Ahmed Shah Massoud. Ahmed Shah Massoud was the famed Northern Alliance leader who was assassinated on September 9, 2001. This photo was taken in a cave during a Soviet bombardment in 1984. So I asked certain key individuals who participated in this aspect of our recent history what they thought of the claim that U.S. support went to Ahmed Shah Massoud. The movie Charlie Wilson's War, it states that our support went to Massoud. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I didn't know that. That's, that's discouraging. That's simply not true. That's simply not true. Uh, I, I, I can still vividly recall in 1986 meeting with one of Ahmed Shah Massoud's logistics officers in Peshawar, and he basically reiterated what many other people had told me, some very good observers of Afghanistan at the time, that, that the actual aid that was getting to the Panjshir Valley and the Massoud was minimal. Nothing close to what Gulbuddin Hekmatyar and some of the other parties received. Um, Massoud was, was the best of the commanders, the most effective, and, and happily the most friendly towards the United States. And he most certainly didn't get what he deserved. And furthermore, he was in a, a highly strategic location, the, the Panjshir Valley, which is north of Kabul, uh, and which um, guards the, the, the transport between Kabul and Termez and the other points up there uh, in, in, uh, next to Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan and Tajikistan, through which countries the Soviet weaponry flowed. So he was in a highly strategic position. He deserved, for reasons of strategy, uh, at least his fair share, and also for reasons that he was a good guy. He was one of the goodest of the guys, if you will. Masood was far enough. God, what a wonderful guy. Uh, if anything, I would say Masood was quite probably the Afghan personality that had been through the Soviet occupation uh, years who had the most possibility for being a statesman. Uh, he was not the, uh, the favorite of the Pakistan because he was not Pashtun, clear. Sorry. Shah Massoud did not have the type of relationship with the Pakistanis that was required to be able to receive the aid. He was independent. He didn't let them run the show. He didn't, he didn't listen to all of their advice. And he, quite frankly, disturbed the Pakistanis. And also there are tribal reasons. But Ahmed Shah Massoud was never cl close to the Pakistanis, and they just didn't give him the type of money, even though he was probably killing more Soviets than any of the Mujahideen. Massoud got very little of U.S. support. Uh, Part of the problem was his uh, location. He was in a very remote part of Afghanistan that was very difficult to resupply. But more importantly, the uh, Pakistanis, who very much controlled where our resources went for many, many years, were reluctant uh, to see any assistance going to Massoud because Massoud was essentially the principal rival in Afghanistan to Gulbuddin who was the Pakistani favored candidate. And what sort of person is Gulbuddin Hikmatyar? The intensity of this man was very evident. And I mean, even, even as early as 1985, people that were really Afghan watchers recognized that Gulbuddin Hikmatyar was no friend of the United States. He made this very, very evident. Well, they simply were hostile to US interests and to Western values generally, and probably could be counted upon to be continue to be hostile to U.S. interests and Western values once the Soviets left and an effort was made to establish a new government, uh, a, 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 a freely chosen government in Afghanistan. Well, I, know, I was at meetings in, in Washington in 86, 87, um, when issues of Gulbuddin's attacks on some of the other Mujahideen parties were raised with members of the United States government, um, both State Department and parts of the intelligence community. I think that it was, it was well recognized that there were problems, but it was also well recognized that Pakistan was making the, making the calls relative to the, 
to the distribution of aid and other dynamics which were extremely critical. Um, I and many members of Congress constantly lobbied, uh, uh, importuned the White House and the State Department and the CIA to take more direct control, to take direct control uh, and to determine which groups should get which weapons and when. Congressman Charlie Wilson worked very closely with the CIA. How did he respond to information that Galbadin Hekmatyar was attacking his allies and abusing civilians? I had, the, I had the impression that he was more willing to rely on the CIA, uh, CIA's word. Everything, you know, trust us, everything is okay, this is going to work out all right, that kind of thing. I, I think he might have been more willing to accept that that line. I, I wasn't. Uh, most others were not. Gobedin Hekmatyar is one of the only prime ministers in the history of mankind that regularly rocketed his own capital. So why did the CIA persist in their support of Gobedin Hekmatyar despite their knowledge that he had a reputation for killing more Afghans than Soviets? Well, I think sometimes in a bureaucracy you become devoted to your past mistakes, that is to say if you're not prepared to acknowledge that you've been on a wrong track for a long time, you become ever more defensive. And I think that was the case uh, with the CIA. Uh, the relationship uh, with Gulbadeen, for example, had developed very early at the behest of the Pakistanis. It was unquestioned in the beginning. And perhaps that's understandable in a, in a very chaotic situation. But over the years, there should have been some questioning. Well, I don't agree with the thesis that the CIA did things right. I think they mostly did them wrong. I think um, it was mostly the valiant um, courage of the Afghan freedom fighters that carried the day, to be sure, with, with our weaponry. But, but the CIA did a, an atrocious job of administering the aid. It didn't do a job at all. It simply handed over this stuff to Pakistan, and Pakistan had its own agenda, its own favored groups. It, it's remarkable to me that there could be such a misreading of, of relatively recent history about which there is lots of factual data. Two days ago, I left a message for Tom Hanks through his assistant inquiring as to why they chose to claim that U.S. support during the 1980s went to Ahmed Shah Massoud. Maybe I shouldn't wait by the phone.